All right, hello and welcome to my 13th Hotline Miami clone in Unity tutorial. And today we are going to be covering uh, floor transitions, so like in Hotline Miami where you go into an elevator and it takes you to a different area. But I've not got checkpoints yet, so that'll be something I have to do. And the first part of the menu, uh, like the main menu and loading levels and stuff, the second, the, this part of the main menu will just cover uh there's loading the levels and like a main menu and then the second part which will be the next episode will cover uh saving data like high scores and whatnot when you finished it and actually finishing levels and going back to the main menu and a pause menu so yeah that's pretty much it i'll get to show you the uh i'll, I'll show you the save that yep i will show you the level the floor transitions first so if we just see so first you have to basically w kill every enemy on the floor the current floor that you're on uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. oh yeah i just quickly mocked up another floor second floor just and i know the doors are glitchy but fucking i don't get it i'm sorry i'll real work out what the fuck's wrong with these bloody doors because i know they can be done right but I'm not sure how. So yeah, as you can see there, you saw there, uh, since I killed all of the guys, I was able to use that elevator to trans go to this other floor, which is here. And I'll just spray and pray here. Hopefully I'll actually get them. And since I've got all these guys on this floor, I can now just bump that and then go back down. Well, not as it were. It's a bit like I didn't think, I thought I'd work fine, but apparently not. So yeah, so and then you can still go back here. Come up, yeah, I see. All right, so I'll show you how the code for that works now. So you can see in the scene we've got the two separate places. So I've got a uh, the first. This is the second floor, then the first floor, and now the code for the elevator is as follows. So basically, it has a public array where you assign all the enemies on the floor that. The current thing is the uh, current. The current you put all in this array here. You put all the enemies that are currently on the floor that you're on. English English is hard. Okay, uh, and basically you can see here, and then it's got the next place to go, which is uh, just a game object, where is is where you teleport to. So in this case, that next point is the elevator here, and it's also got a rigid body on it and a 2d box slider used as a trigger so and then basically it says on trigger enter it'll check if the game object that's triggered it is a play is the player object and if all enemies are dead and it can travel so all enemies are dead are basically just checking that all enemies on this floor are dead simple really so you can see if all of them have a tag dead which gets set in the enemy health I'll just find an example of that. Let me attack. I think that's it. So as you see, when they get killed, the tag is set to dead. And when all the all the enemies on this floor are dead, it'll return true. But if it finds even one where the tag's not dead, it'll return false. And not allow you to teleport. And then the can travel is basically a little limiter, so you can't like. So basically, once you've travelled, it'll say you can't travel, and if if can't travel, can travel, sorry, is false, it'll just count down for a second, and then allow it to be true. So what this does is it basically when you've teleported to the uh, next teleporter, if the teleporter say you've killed everyone on the level and you were just walking around it it would stop it just like since when you teleport when you, you trigger the enter collider which on trigger enter means it's good sorry uh it is i know what i don't know why i'm stopping uh it's basically on the first frame that you've collided with the collider it'll trigger this code and then 
if it doesn't trigger, like say all enemies weren't dead, it wouldn't trigger anymore. But while can travel is false, it just counts down, so it gives the player time to move to the next place. And it'll then so it won't just completely like it won't keep flicking between the two if you're travelling between two elevators where all enemies are dead. Right, so that's just to avoid it being glitchy. And for the actual teleportation or movement, it just literally just sets the other you know, the player dot transform the position to the next place to go dot transform dot position. That's pretty simple. Okay, now on to the main menu. What's that? Don't know. Just gonna hide that. Menu. Okay, so basically we've got a couple of new scripts for the menu. We've got Basically, a data structure which we're keeping on game objects in the scene for each of the levels. They're all the same level, but I'm just using them as an example. So we've got they have a string called the level name, which is what the level will be called in the menu. The icon for the level, which is just like a little uh, just picture of the level. In this case, in Hotline Miami, they use like a little top-down map of the level. Uh, I've just done something similar, but doesn't look as good. Uh, a score, a high score value, which is not implemented yet, that'll be done in the next one, and an unlocked value, which again, is just set to public for now, so I can demonstrate how loading levels works, but will be properly implemented in the next episode. And then we've got a string for the name in the scene manager. So say if you have uh, some funny way of naming your scenes just to keep them organized, and you want it to display as something differently in the uh, actual menu, you can use this basically is what it's called in the assets folder or whatever. So you can see testing here, it'll load this scene because it's called testing. And yeah, simply simple, really. Now we come on to the menu screen and I'll just show you what it looks like. So we've got basically I use W and S to navigate the menu, we've got exit, play, click play. We can use A and D to cycle through the levels and backspace to return. So yeah, and if you press enter, it loads. Simple. Okay. Now onto the menu screen code. Uh, this is the level screen, level store, sorry. Simple, really. Okay. So first thing, again, as we use with the player health, we've imported using Unity Engine dot scene management because that's the new way to load scenes that they're implementing for some reason. I don't know why they uh, needed to change it from application dot load level, but I'm sure they have their reasons for whatever. Uh, so we can see here we've got the GUI scaling code that we used before, which is just a stretch. Uh, it basically just makes the GUI a similar scale to whatever screen size you're on. Which it keeps it in the same position as well, so it doesn't go off the edge of the screen or whatever. Uh, we've got GUI styles, which are basically just different ones for the text. So as you can see, uh, I'll just show you again. There is like, there's one for just white plain text. There's one for the purple text and one for the black shadow text. And they're used here as well. Uh, so they are the three ty text, title text, and title shadow. We've got the texture, a texture for the 2D, which is background, which is literally just that black box you saw. It's about on my screen again, wonderful. And these bools are contr control which state the menu is in. So these two bools control which, on the, on the menu, the initial menu screen, which icon has the black background. So if play select is true, that has the black background behind the text. If exit select is true, that has the black background inside the text as shown here. So you can see if play select is true, it'll draw the background and the menu position and the menu text. Else it just draws the menu text and similar one for exit select. And it just use, uh, they all use a rep that's declared before just to state where it is. So this basically takes it to the middle of the screen. So the formula for it is, I think, to get to the middle of the screen is the original width of the screen divided by two minus the width of the rect divided by two. 
that'll just put it in the middle of the width and original similar one for original height but i'm using like putting it at the top of the screen so i just have an original height minus original height which is the same as zero and then we if menu's true it'll make sure play is false and then it'll just draw it'll set the title post to new uh new one which is just the same but we have to have something to declare it on so the, the value to declare it with and it draws basically a, a box at the title position puts clone line miami as the box and uses the title shadow so this basically the lower the code for drawing gui elements which you basically just like gui.box or gui.draw texture it, it'll put it in forward so if we draw the box the shadow of the text first and then the title text as you can see by the two different gui styles then this one will be drawn on top of this one and since we've uh modified the rect where it's drawn it'll give a nice shadow effect and then yeah so this is basically it and we've also got an input control a public array of levels which is just where the levels are stored and a current a counter for uh, counter that basically counts it's basically the active level that we're looking at on the play section so i'll just show you the input controller now as well the input controller controls two bullets. so basically it checks if menu is equal to true so that'll be the main menu bit uh it checks if the player's pressed s or w then it'll switch and depending on which either play select or exit select is true it'll switch to the other one so if exit select is true and you press s it'll switch to play select and if you press enter and play select is true it'll switch to the level select menu which is if play is true as you can see play true here menu set to false else if it's exit select it'll just quit the application but it doesn't work you can't quit do it in work that code doesn't work in the unity editor because you can't quit the unity editor because it'll just it probably just mess up and it's got a different set of input controls if play is true so if you press backspace and play is true it'll just return you to the menu so it's just the opposite of this code here and if you press d and the level select count which is an integer here is less than the levels dot length minus one because an array counts in it for the items in the index of an array starts at zero it'll increase so you'll get the next level and if it's oh fuck off phone uh and if it's more than zero and you press a it'll go down so basically it'll limit you between zero and the top element of the levels array and if you press return and the value the level is unlocked then it will load the level we use the scene manager which we imported here to load the scene okay uh i'll just give you a quick show you that so I probably should check that it doesn't actually load. I've seen. Yep, see, pressing enter, press enter, loads. Yep, that's pretty much it. I died, start to restart, starts us. There we go. Okay, so yeah, that is pretty much it. I will just give you a quick overview of the code if anyone wants to try and copy it down. There's the input controller, variables, import, remember that, it's important. Uh, and the on GUI code. I mean, a bit cluttered to read, but it's easy enough. It's simple enough. It's just literally drawing boxes and setting where to draw them. And there. Uh, Uh, I'll just show you the elevator code. And level store, simple, just there. And the menu is actually on the main camera of the scene. It doesn't really matter where you put it because the result will be the same. But, you know, just thought I'd mention that. All right, so cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. 
and go play Louder Quiet, which I'm working on. I uh, should have a new video up for it in the next couple of days because I've been implementing, I've redone another level and I'm going to implement uh, like a hint sort of thing, like arrows just to indicate things that might help you in the level. All right, so just watching. Bye.